we're uh, we're on another outcrop in uh, in Ireland in the Carboniferous Ross Formation, and I'm joined here by my my good friend Ning, guest for the day, former uh, petroleum engineer, former, former petroleum. Uh, CEO, and now we're retraining as a geologist. So uh, <laughs> upward career trajectory, I think. Um, so you know, Ning is a keen observer of the subsurface as well. So. Um, Want to want to make a comment or two about what you see on the surface we're standing on? It looks like there's a lot of uh, deformity, deformation, yeah. um, and uh, it looks like it's um, a mi mix match between uh, mud and sand. Yeah, it's very deformed, and you can even see these sort of round blobs in yeah. there. Yeah, they're kind of sandier bits and then muddier bits. So this is a very deformed section, and this is what we it, it, we're standing on the Ross slide here. It's a mass transport, small mass transport complex. So it's it's instantaneously depositing a pile of mud with intermixed sand um, into the basin. And then you know one feature that's really cool here, that's very unique, is uh, it's kind of over here. So you know, Ning would want to comment on what sort of shape that that looks like. Well, that looks like a volcano to me. <laughs> yeah, very looks good. Like a little volcano feature. Is that yeah. what it is? It is a volcano. Yeah, and you can you can see a crater. Yeah. You can even see some flow runnels running off of it. So uh, it's the geometry of a volcano. Amazing. But it's not made out of lava. Mm. So then the other option is, oh, a mud volcano. So it's like not made out of mud either. This is a, this is a sand volcano. Mm. So it's an eruption of sand onto the Paleo seafloor. And on top of this slide, which is not a coincidence, so really what happened is underneath this slide is a, is a very thick, and I'll just kind of show you a drawing of that here, is a very thick... Um, lobe complex, very sandy, and what happens when you instantaneously load that with such a thing as a Ross slide, which is very low permeability, it, it overpressures the sand underneath, and the fluids will want to escape back to the, the seafloor. Now in this case, because the fluids exist in a very permeable connected um, rock type, what it will do is the flow velocity gets high enough that it will not just erupt the fluids, but it will drag all the sand grains along, so it will make these, these connected pathways and sand volcanoes on the uh, on the seafloor, such as a volcano here, so that is that is a really cool, cool thing. But there's also, you know, why do you care? There's also a, a, an oil and gas relevance to this because very often these these empty seas and muddy transport complexes, mm -hmm. we we think they're seals and they very often are. But if they load on top of these sandy complexes, they can actually create these bypass networks. Yeah, and they can actually connect different reservoir units by the nature of these these injectites. Um, very common in offshore mm. Angola. I've seen lots of that. Uh, very common in Guyana, Suriname as well, actually. Um, if people are looking at course there, you see a lot of that, that motif associated with these MTC. So they can create unexpected reservoir connectivity, mm. which could be good or bad, depending on what fluids you're pulling through. Yeah. So it's yeah. almost like uh, uh, little tunnels of uh, sand. It's exactly that. Or straws. That, that, they're that's they're like pipes the... of sand that mm. coming through and connecting up different sand bodies. So. So be aware of that when you're looking at this type of depositional system. Oh, that is amazing. Thank you for your insights, Ning. Oh, thank you.